As I see it, there are two main problems with this new Toyota GR Supra 2 liter. The first is that it's got a four rather than a six cylinder engine, and that just isn't the Supra way. And the second is that it's now worryingly close in terms of power and price to one of the best new sports cars you can buy, the Alpine A110 Pure. On paper, there's very little between them. The GR Supra 2 litre has 258 horsepower, the A110 Pure 252 horsepower. The Supra costs £45,995, the A110 £48,990. The Alpine used to cost £46,000, but at the start of this year, it jumped up a couple of thousand pounds. For all their similarities, there is one big difference. The Supra weighs 1,395 kilograms, making it 300 kilos heavier than the A110. If you've ever given a lift to four schoolmates in the tiny hatchback you drove when you were 17, you'll know what an extra 300 kilograms can feel like. We'll come back to that Alpine comparison in a moment. The point of this new model is that it's a more affordable way into a GR Supra. It's 7,000 pounds less than the three litre car. This one comes on 18 inch rather than 19 inch wheels. But apart from that, from the outside, you'd never know this was the more affordable model. Like the six cylinder car, the four cylinder model uses a turbocharged BMW engine. The eight speed auto and active limited slip differential are carried over as well. The two litre car gives up 82 horsepower to the three litre model, which sounds like a lot until you learn something very important. This base model is 100 kilograms lighter than the top spec car. Remember that number. Stepping out of that Alpine and into this Supra is like going from a monk's bedroom to a suite in a five-star hotel. It's a totally different proposition in here. You've got these big, soft, comfy chairs, high-grade materials everywhere. You've got lots of space. That booth is actually really big. The seating position in this Supra is okay. It's not quite perfect. And actually the seats, they don't look or feel all that supportive. As we know, a lot of this stuff is lifted directly from BMW. The iDrive system, the gear selector, all this switch gear, the ventilation controls, that's all BMW. But we're over that by now, aren't we? This Supra isn't really a particularly big car, but it does feel like one. You just have this sense of there being a lot of plastic and metal and rubber around you partly because there's this very high dashboard and a high bonnet line as well, which just gives the impression of there being a couple of tons of car right in front of you. And when you combine that with this plush interior and these very comfort-oriented seats, you're kind of left with this impression that the GR Supra isn't an out-and-out -out sports car, that it's much more of a grand tourer. So I suppose the question that follows is this, is this two litre car, which is 100 kilograms lighter than the three litre car, is it more inherently sporting? Does taking all that weight out make it less GT and more sports car like? I think it does a bit, but it's not transformational. It really isn't. Okay, so what do you find? The car does feel lighter. You do sense that there's less weight over the front axle because the nose is just keener to tuck into a corner. It helps as well that this two litre car's got 18 inch wheels and a bit more tyre sidewall. That just helps iron out the road a little bit, makes the ride a little bit smoother. Actually, even the three litre GR Supra has got a really plush, pliant ride, but it's even better in this car. But those same GR Supra sort of dynamic traits, they're pretty much unchanged. So you sit a really long way back in the car, the bonnet seems to reach on forever, and there's just no sense of connection through the steering whatsoever. The steering itself is light, it's very quick, and it's just not remotely talkative. And so when you combine all those things together, what you have is very little idea of what the front axle is actually up to. That adds to the sense of this being a Grand Tour rather than a sports car as well. It all means that if you're going to drive this thing as hard as you dare on the road, you really have to allow your confidence to build over time. It's not one of those cars that you jump in and you just feel at one with right away. You really have to take your time with it. 
And then you realise that there is good body control, there is tonnes of grip, there's decent traction, and that's when you can start wringing the car's neck. Even so, the car feels a very particular way when you start flinging it down a road. Dare I say it, feels quite BMW-like as though there's lots of rubber in the suspension. The chassis, it seems to squirm all over the place. It doesn't, when you tip it into a corner, take a set right away. Instead, it just feels slightly floaty, slightly disconnected. There's lots of vertical body movement over an undulating road. And so it's just not super well keyed into the surface. Traction is pretty good thanks to that electronically controlled but mechanical limited slip differential. You just stand on the power and away you go. But it feels like a compromise, this car. That's the thing, it feels like a compromise. Like they've tried quite hard to make it comfortable and usable every day and thought, well, if that makes it less sharp, less immediate, less responsive, so be it. So yes, this two litre car does feel a little bit nimbler, a little bit keener than the heavier three litre car, but it's not night and day, it's really not. The ride is a bit better, but it's not a huge difference. Anyway, let's talk about the engine. That's the big point, isn't it really? Again, it's a BMW engine, this time a four cylinder turbo. Sounds okay, in a sort of manufactured exhaust note kind of way, I don't know. It's not the most stirring soundtrack, is it? Can you hear that? Let's do it again. It's all right. Performance is strong. It pulls pretty hard. It's a responsive, quite energetic engine, but it's not exactly a firework, this thing. It doesn't go off. The eight-speed automatic gearbox, it's, again, I mean, it works well. It's quite snappy, quite responsive. But I just think we want a bit more urgency in a sports car transmission, don't we? Do you know what? The seven grand saving, that's all well and good. That's a lot of money. But if I was buying a Toyota GR Supra, I'd want the six cylinder. The two litre Supra doesn't just have to prove itself against the three litre car. It also faces the toughest competition imaginable in the shape of the A110 Pure. The Alpine is much smaller and lighter and less usable every day because of it but few cars are as fun to drive as this little French coupe. Ah, the little Alpine. This <laughs> immediately feels like a completely different car to that Supra. It feels tiny compared to the Toyota. There's nothing to it and it feels so light. And whereas in the Supra, you wait for your confidence to build, you wait to get a sense of what the car is doing around you. And this thing, it happens straight away. Its steering is immediately more intuitive. You just have more faith in it right away. It's an easier car to thread along a road just because it's so tiny. The footprint is so small. You can just position it with so much confidence. The really clever thing about this Alpine is how fluid the suspension is. The car just glides along these bumpy roads like it's nothing. It's so clever. And I love the way the car feels in corners. It rolls noticeably. And that just makes it feel alive. Lean on the grip, even in these wet conditions. Feel the grip, trust it. It's a proper driver's car. They've clearly set out to make this thing brilliant to drive and everything else is just a sort of secondary concern. It's brilliant. I remember speaking to a GR Supra engineer a couple of years ago and I asked him what he thought of the Alpine A110 and he said, yeah, it's great, but for him, this is just not the kind of car you'd use every day, which actually is nonsense. Okay, it doesn't have much storage space. There isn't really anywhere to put anything in this cabin. But apart from that, it's really easy to live with. It's comfortable, it's surprisingly refined and quiet on the motorway, it's just undemanding in normal driving. And then, when you start hammering along a great road, it's magical. The engine, it's good. It's punchy, it's 
energetic, it's responsive, and it doesn't matter that it's only a four-cylinder because a little French sports car should have a four-cylinder engine, whereas the Supra, you think, should have a six-cylinder. This dual-clutch gearbox is good, it's much more responsive than the eight-speed auto in the Toyota. I like the soundtrack in this car. They've done a really good job getting some tune out of the exhaust note, out of the engine sound, given it's quite a modest engine. This car's got the optional sports exhaust and it does make a big difference. It really is a masterpiece, this little Alpine. It's so good to drive. It's got chassis balance to burn. It's got the right amount of grip. Not so much that it just feels inert and glued to the road. It's got such good body control. It's super agile and alert. At 1,100 kilograms, 300 kilos lighter than that Supra, I mean, it's just a total game changer. In terms of how confidence inspiring these two cars are, in terms of how fun they both are to drive on the road, this A110 Pure is streets ahead. There's no doubt the A110 is more outright fun. Actually, in that sense, it's in a different league, but the Supra is much more spacious, more luxurious, more practical and better equipped. It's a far better daily. And compared to the six-cylinder Supra, yes, this entry-level car feels a bit lighter and sharper because of it, but the Supra is still no out-and-out -out sports car. Instead, it's more like a sporty Grand Tourer, the kind of car that, for me, should always have a howling six-cylinder engine. Thank you for watching this Pistonheads video. Remember to subscribe to our channel and please head over to pistonheads.com.